248 for five, thanks to Poonam Rao's 77 and three scores of 36 in that Indian middle order in the third ODI against South Africa. Here we are back on the outside view live part by West Point Aprilia. We'll get down to dissecting bits of that that innings, but let's look at the SXR 160 before before that. <laughs> You're late. Don't just live life, maxify it. Back again on the outside view live part by Vespa and Aprilia. 200 to 220 was the, was the language of uh, our pre-match show today. Claire Coven and Sonia Dabir are there with us on this episode. On this episode. But coming to you first, Claire, it's, it turned out to be a... 250, close to 250 score. Happy, sad. What's the what's the thought? Yeah, it's a it was an interesting score. I I always have a common sort of thing that I always try and apply, even when I was sort of playing, or even when I'm sort of trying to be overly critical about watching cricket. And I always say, you know, don't judge a pitch until both teams have batted. And and I don't know why I have this feeling about this pitch in particular. So I totally agree. I, I thought 200 to 220, you know, would be a, let's call it an average target. Anything over 220, I thought South Africa would probably struggle to chase down. However, after watching that innings and watching the pitch, I almost feel 250 was is a par score. Um, I think if I was India going into the change room now, I would be being a little bit disappointed at not getting sort of 270. Um, and you've hit the nail on the head. Three scores of 36. So I don't know what what voodoo they've got going on, but to <laughs> to have three scores of 36, you know, as a coach, you want to say to yourself, well, we've got in and we've got ourselves out. Uh, and you've got, a, I think, I think um, a Smitri scored 25, and she looked, she looked fantastic and getting reasonably good starts. And, you know, one or two of them just needed to kick on a little bit more you know, I wouldn't even say 270. I mean, you know, India could have been sort of breaking the limits, you know, and really pushing the boundaries instead in, in terms of setting targets in, in women's cricket there. So I think, actually, I think 250 or 249 that South Africa have to chase is going to be a really intriguing chase. And I think the carrot is there. I think South Africa would expect themselves to be in with a chance. India probably slightly disappointed, maybe feel that they're a little bit short. Um, however, there, there, there was some phenomenal batting. So again, I'm not gonna, I don't want to criticize the batting, but I, I do think maybe sort of 15 to 20 runs short. Not sure if it might be a hoodoo, but it could probably be that those who walked into bat after Mithali Raj didn't want to overpower her or score more than that as a mark of respect. But <laughs> that that's just on a lighter note. But let's come to you, Sonia. That that 80 run or 70 odd run partnership between Poonam Raut and Mithali Raj, that seemed to be a different phase where that was the phase in fact where Mithali Raj also passed the 10,000 run mark in internationals. Your thought about Poonam's inning and Mithali's partnership with Poonam during that phase? Uh, I think... Uh... Vitali crossing that big landmark is a big achievement for her as well as for women's cricket overall. Uh, it was a much needed partnership for, uh, for both of them because Poonam Rauth had got that start which she required and uh, early wicket of Jemima and Shruti, that partnership was very crucial uh, considering the match uh, and the start which they wanted to get after those two wickets. So, um, Poonam's inning was much, much uh, exciting than the, uh, the previous two ODIs, I must say, because today she looked uh, really attacking while batting, uh, stepping out or the walking down shots which she played or the keeper's back shots. It was nice to see her with that positive intent and with especially when you have Mithali at the other end, it is like it becomes very... Um, Cooling if it gives you a cooling effect that you know she is there to score those runs and you can actually free up your game. So I think that was a very crucial uh, partnership for considering this game. But as rightly said by Claire, uh, definitely 15-20 runs. Even I would have loved to see more at the end of the inning, especially when you have those wickets in your hand. Yeah, we always want more runs, don't we? Because yeah, the, the track played better. <laughs> Coming to you, Claire, about Poonam's knock. We, 
Poonam, there's always one word associated with Poonam Rao in the lead up to the series that was strike rate that she didn't seem to have enough. But today, from the word go, she kind of yeah. looked, uh, showed intent, played those crisp boundaries. Your thoughts, Claire, on on Poonam's innings because she got off to a fluent start and then kind of slowed down towards uh, when when the wickets were falling at the other end. So interesting bit of innings that. Yeah, absolutely. I think she was in a really tricky situation, and I and I almost liked the way she composed her innings. She came in, I think, on the third ball. So, you know, yes, obviously, when you're batting number three, um, you know, you know that that's always the potential of it happening. But you really still need to sort of compose the innings and settle things down because, you know, as Boria said in the in the pre-match build-up, you know, you don't want to, you don't mind losing the one wicket, but you don't want to go and lose two wickets for 20. You don't want to find yourself in that in that situation. So I thought she batted beautifully. What I loved about her innings as well, and you don't often see it in, in the ladies' game, is is not necessarily her feet movement um, out of the crease, sort of towards the batsman. Uh, the bats lady, I thought at times she used the width of the crease brilliantly. You sort of saw her move laterally. So, you know, she would start on the, on sort of uh, on stamp and then she would sort of work her way to off stamp. And, and she was really, really clever manipulating from leg side onto the off side. And you could see the bowlers were having to think. And she even did that early on in her innings. And what she kind of did to the first change bowlers to Kaka and Sekakune to sort of try and unsettle them. Um, I, th- I thought it was really, really phenomenal. It was just a really thinking innings. You know, if you want to be like overly critical, you know, people might have said, well, maybe she should have tried to accelerate a little bit. But my opinion is she didn't really have, she didn't have the situation to do it because they kept losing wickets um, at very opportune times. I mean, South Africa, that's probably the one thing that they got right um, is they picked up wickets when they really needed to. And I think, that almost put the brakes on Poonam's innings because she never, you could see it. She was, you know, manipulating the field and starting to sort of play some really good shots and then a wicket would fall. And that kind of made her have to not pull up to back step, you know, one or two steps, just consolidate again and then start over. So it was almost the fall of wickets didn't really allow her to sort of accelerate her innings. But I thought it was a beautiful innings and very, very well constructed. Yeah, fair point that, but, it's going to be a simple question from me, Sonia, but I'm going to put you in a spot and ask what's wrong with Jemima Rodriguez, the sixth duck in ODI. How do you read the situation? It it, it do it does happen, you know. It is it, it's it's a game. It's a part of game. You just have to uh, trust the player in such situation because even uh, back of mind, I'm sure Jemima must be thinking what uh, what I should do exactly. But I think it's just a matter of time she'll be back. Uh, because I've seen her, uh, I've not met her uh, <laughs> till then, but I've seen her many many of her innings where she has, uh, she does has come back uh, as a batsman or maybe uh, the Indian team just can, you know, take her, make her play a bit one down and let Puna open because she is in the right form. So, you know, um, Jamima might get some time to think of or rethink what's happening and I'm sure she'll be back. Uh, because she is a very talented player. If, uh, you may say, or we, you know, it's seen that she is a seasoned campaigner, but she's just 19 or 20 years old. So we just have to give her time and trust her abilities. Yeah, very young player. You change her order. You do anything yeah. to get her back amongst the yeah. Indian team. But talking about another 21-year-old, Claire, I'm yeah. sure you would have made long notes uh, uh, in your secret diary that you maintain. On Laura Volpat's captaincy, she she is she some she's made of some other material. It seems because normally you kind of focus your camera on the skipper of the side. Uh, he or she would be seen gesticulating and putting your fielders here and there. I have done that in in backyard cricket just for the sake of you know showing that I am the captain. But here was Laura Volpat standing coolly in the backward point position with her cool eyeglasses on, just. I mean, stone dead reaction, a casual smile. What did you make of her captaincy in the in the in the third ODI? Yeah, I would almost describe her captaincy uh, almost the way she goes about batting innings. You know, you sort of look at her; she doesn't get too excited about anything. You know, we all applauding a phenomenal extra cover drive, and we just think it's the best thing we've seen in the last three days. Um, I mean, it's exactly the same when she's captain. She's just cool. She's calm. 
you know, there, there sort of really is no panic. You know, and, and, and we've discussed sort of different captaincy or leadership styles sort of over the last couple of weeks, even when we, we were doing the Pakistan series. And, you know, I just find it interesting from a psychological perspective to see these different captains come to the fore and just how they manage, how they lead, just totally different personalities. So, but to sum up her, her captaincy, I, I thought it was really good for the first ODI um, really, you know, you know, saying she probably had one night or one evening to, to think about it. We, I, I've been trying to find out, but don't quite know. It seems like it is a stomach bug that Sune picked up. And, you know, those things can come on pretty quickly. So, you know, she was lucky she found out that she was sort of maybe yesterday morning or so. So, you know, quite a quick time, turnaround in terms of getting your head right into the captaincy role and try to sort of, this is how I want to plan it. But I thought her change of bowlers was brilliant. I quite enjoyed the sort of, you know, pushing Ishmael and Cup through for the four overs um, and then bringing on Kaka and Sekakune at the right time. Um, and, and, and then she had, and, and then and then I was like, oh, when Shangashi coming on, don't leave it too late. And literally as that thought was popping into my mind, there Shangashi comes on. And then I was like, oh, okay, now, are you backing Shangashi to bowl 10 overs? You know, when's, when's Annika Bosch going to come in? Because you want her to get a, a couple of overs because... You could kind of see the plan. Okay, well, we'll give Shangasi, we're going to give Bosch, and that will get us our fifth, you know, our fifth bowler of 10. Um, and, I mean, she played it beautifully. She really, really did, you know, it was it was fantastic. I thought her field placing was also really good. Um, at times, she sort of brought that uh, cover fielder in slightly, sort of not, not quite a short cover, but sort of between a short cover and a normal cover as such. And I thought that was really clever. Um so I no, she she must give herself a, a big pat on the back for her first outing. Um, you know, leading your your country, I, I thought she did brilliantly. Yeah, she did brilliantly. You do brilliantly by making those notes in a secret diary, which I want to hijack someday to kind of look at the notes made. But she's she's a doctor. She was studying for becoming a doctor, but she she should have done chosen yeah. arts because she's always artistic, whether she bats or today, as we saw, saw in her captaincy. But Sonia, till the time uh, Harman Pritkor and Deepti Sharma were there in the middle towards the end, it seemed that India were primed for more, which is why I understand when both you and Claire say that India are short of some runs, you see that partnership and you kind of felt that they lost the momentum around the 40 to 40 second over month, do you think? Uh, actually, yeah, we can say that, but uh, I guess when I was watching, it was a bit, the ball was coming a bit slowly off the pitch. In, uh, when especially when Harman and Dipti were batting, because uh, later on uh, after uh, Harman got out, it was a bit difficult for uh, Dipti. Or actually, it would have been easy for her, but the pitch was a bit slower uh, on the slower side. I felt. Yeah, Claire, that fifth bowler strategy was awesome, wasn't it? Nandumi so Shanga Shangase and Aneka Bosch. Aneka Bosch, of course. Well, remember 12th of March till the till the time she plays because first wicket in international cricket is Mithali Raj and it wasn't wasn't a peach so to say it was an easy pull toss that she got uh, got uh, her wicket off so interesting interesting bowling attack bowling, bowling combination as well that fifth bowler to kind of keep Shanga say who was who seemed a bit lit, uh, a little less effective. To the side and use Annika Bosch well. So, your thoughts on the fifth bowling strategy for South Africa? Yeah, look, I, I I thought it really worked well. It was quite interesting because there was quite a lull in terms of scoring between overs 31 and 35. I think um, there were only sort of about 13 or 14 runs scored between those overs. Um, and then that stage, that's where they were were using that sort of fifth bowler. Um, then if you have a look at over 36 to 37, I think there were 23 runs scored within those two overs. So if I had to be overly critical, and look, hindsight is always an exact science. So it's easy for me to sit here now and look back in terms of the results and what happened. But you, you probably find that, that they went on one over too many. But the problem is then where do you, you know, where do you make it up? You know, so I look at my notes and I'm like, oh, absolutely, probably one, one over too many. But then who bowls the other over? So, so I I thought that Laura Volpot did really really well with that first that first bowler combination. And um, yeah, look, Shangasi, it was it was interesting. You know, you coming on and she probably knew she was only going to get sort of four or five overs. So 
for me, it almost looked like she lacked a bit of rhythm. Um, and she is quite a confident bowler. She kind of needs to feel that she's finding the groove. You know, she's, she's putting the ball in the spot that she wants. And it just seemed like she was lacking that, which makes sense because she hasn't had that much game time. You know, it's her first run out in India, um, you know, in this series. And you kind of think, oh, I'm a spinner. Like, you know, am, is she maybe now expecting big turn? Or, you know, is she a bit of kick off the pitch as she pitches it? So they those things that will probably be playing through her mind that she might have been overthinking instead of just get the ball in my hand, let me just run up and let me deliver with my normal natural fluidity and rhythm. Um, but I wasn't disappointed in, 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 in how she performed today. Um, you know, look, they were just under a run rate of five. She was going at six runs over. So, you know, and look, the Indian batters are brilliant at manipulating spinners. So we also have to say that, you know, India, Indian batsmen, doesn't matter if you look at the ladies or at the men, their strength is playing spinners because they get so exposed to it. So, you know, as a South African spinner, you know, you're trying to build your career, get those opportunities. I don't think she should be too sort of overly critical on her performance today. I thought she did really, really well. Um, but, yeah, I, I, was, I was really happy just to sort of elaborate further is, is through the fifth, the fifth bowler is, is how, our fielding, how our fielding was today. I thought the South African um, catches were absolutely superb. Um, and Annika Bosch pulled over off a great catch, you know, over her shoulder. Um, and then Tumi Sekakune, a phenomenal catch, um, you know, having to probably make sort of 20, 30 yards. And then again, over the shoulder. And, you know, for people who haven't played cricket, that is, that is probably the worst catch to, to have to take. It's the worst catch to trade when it's sort of coming over your back and now you're having to watch it into your hand. You know, you lose sight as it comes through. Uh, so I thought South Africa's fielding, in terms of catching, they were really good. I think they could have heated up um, in some of their ground fielding at times. There were, you know, one or two little bubbles and pops and all that sort of thing that India would have gone through for the odd single. Bowling, the bowling worked really well for South Africa today. Yeah, just just for those who are low on energy, just show them a bit of Tumi Sekukune and that should probably energize them because the way she brings the energy to the field, that catch was out of this world for me. So that that sums up their fielding very well. So third ODI, 248 for five is what India have got. We'll just step aside from the game and move to our segment that we call Vespa, Know Your, know your Players. Sonia Dabir is here. First T20I, three wickets. And those wickets can't be get bigger. So I let Sonia, you to kind of talk us through those wickets and how did you get them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I am. Uh, it was amazing to get Edwards and uh, Greenway and um, I just lost it. Laura Marsh. Laura yeah. Marsh. Laura Marsh. Laura Marsh on my debut in the T20. Definitely, it was uh, kind of a dream spell. But unfortunately, we end up on losing that T20. But uh, I guess uh, Laura Marsh and Greenway were stumped, stumped and uh, Edwards was caught, at, uh, was caught at mid off. So I definitely, we, we were playing at BKC. And uh, definitely, I had a few nervous moments to start off for the match. But it came out well because I had uh, Greenway and uh, Laura Marsh in the same over. Two wickets in the same over <laughs> on your debut game must be incredible. But did you kind of plan? in a specific way for these battles because you you see them uh, in the in the ODIs as well before yeah more than planning uh, one thing i was very sure of that uh, if at all i'm bowling uh, consistently on one line and length or try, i was trying to bowl more dot balls because of which uh, it was like they might they will definitely have pressure on them when they get the dot so any batsman will have, especially in T20. So my plan was just to bowl consistently in one line and length and bowling dot balls was the key, actually. Right, then bowling dot balls and she's returned with three for 23 in her first T20. But let's come back to the third ODI between India and South Africa. 249 to get for South Africa to take a 2-1 lead in this five-match series. We've been always using the word critical in our build-up as well. And even now, because this is a, a, probably a, this game could beside the future of the series. Claire, coming to you first on this South African batting. It's an interesting, it has an interesting look to it because there's no uh, Sune Lees at three. And I, I believe that they have freezed or cemented Laura Goodall, Lara Goodall at four. So what do you kind of think would their batting lineup look like today? 
Yeah, so that's a really good question. And I think South Africa, they do have a few options um, that they could play around with. Um, so the obvious one would be to see Cup come in at three. So, you know, if, if you le- lose one of Leo Volpot, um, then you might see Cup, you know, come out of her number six position and start in at number three, which she's done before and she's done so really successfully. So that would be option one. Option two would be to bat Annika Bosch at number three. Um, and you know what? I, I almost like that approach. I, I think batter at number three, get her in, get her settled. Um, I think if she can just spend some time at the crease and build her confidence, the fluidity of the ball coming off the bat will come. If you, if you come with cup too high up and now suddenly you've lost one of your openers and cup, then I think South Africa are going to be in a little bit of a tricky situation because now you're going to be relying on Lara Goodall, you're going to now be relying on Anna Kabosh, and then obviously Mignon, who's got your experience. So I'm kind of going, don't put the pressure on Anna Kabosh. Don't, don't sort of, you know, number three, you have to make it work. Kind of say to her, go out there, take your time um, to sort of get your eye in and then start manipulating the field. Even if she can maintain a strike rate of around about 60, um, and the other batters can kind of bat her and maybe they're batting at 70 and 80, you know, then, then you're fine. So it's going to be interesting. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what, what route they're going to go. Um, but I would like to see Annika Bosch come in at three. Um, you know, probably another thing could be a possibility would be to, to bat Mignon Dupree up higher up, which, again, Mignon is so talented. Um, and and I'm a, I've always said I'm a huge fan of her. Um, and she could definitely do that. But again, you're getting yourself into a similar situation if, if you lose then Mignon or one of the, the openers. It's the same situation as Cup. So I think they should put Annika Bosch in at number three. You know, try and take the pressure off her as much as you can when you play international cricket. Um, and, and just say to her, just try and settle down. Just, uh, you know, find your straps when you're batting and, and then let other people sort of build innings around and then see where she can go from there. Yeah, very fair point. I like the fact that South Africa have listed Annika Bosch at three and I would like to like to see her bat more because in the couple of innings that she played against Pakistan in the preceding series, she looked really good against spin as well. She looked comfortable throughout her stay in the middle before kind of almost throwing away her wicket. So I like that extension where she'll kind of get more time to settle in, get the pace of the wicket against the seamers and then kind of take her time and maneuver the gap on the field against the spin. So that's a wonderful move because then it gives us cushion for South Africa down below with Kaap, <coughs> Mignon Dupree and also Finalo Jafta. But interesting, we'll, we'll wait and see what yeah, that lineup looks. Yeah, I, I think I just wanted to add is because also if, if South Africa starts struggling with the run rate since it was the last 10, 15 overs, if you've got Dupree and Cup coming in and being able to manage that period of play that's ideally what you want because that's when the run chase is going to get really critical. And um, Sonala Jafta is a really handy wicketkeeper back. So she can bat. But again, she yeah. just doesn't have the experience. So you don't have a Trisha Tetti, you know, six or seven runs and over. So she doesn't have that experience to fall back onto. And so, you know, that's why I like the idea of having that experience with Mignon and Kapi at five and six. And then they can help and they can shepherd the tail enders through that period of play um, when it could get critical. Right, fair point. That Sonia, putting you in Mithali Raj sho- uh, shoes before we kind of wrap up this show, how long will you kind of persist with the opening seam attack of Julan Goswami and Mansi Joshi? I guess uh, there's nothing uh, wrong in pursuing because they both have done well in the last uh, two ODIs. Not Mansi Joshi, of course, Julan. Julan now is, you know, I guess Julan must be just uh, preparing herself before an ODI just mentally. She is such an amazing bowler. I've, I've played with Julan. I've seen how hard uh, she's worked on her bowling and her fitness recently in the pandemics. I guess Julan would like to continue her form from the previous ODI and even for Mansi Joshi. She's come back, I, I guess, after an injury. And she's come back well. The line and length which, which she was bowling in the last ODI was uh, really good to see that. And Julian, as always, you know, you don't need to think more when Julian is bowling. Right, then final thoughts, Sonia. 2-1, 
South Africa 2 1 India what is going to be <laughs> definitely 2 1 India <laughs> Claire where do you stand <laughs> I'm going to have to go to one South Africa um <laughs> I think it's going to be an exciting uh, exciting chase I really do um mm-hmm. South Africa are going to have to back well yeah. to get there so it's definitely not going to be an easy chase um and uh you know I, I think I'd probably feel a little bit more confident if the team wasn't uh changed yeah. uh, but obviously you know you don't have to nay you know you don't have to nay there um Trish Petty at the back end of the innings you cannot yeah. ignore that kind of area definitely um and her attacking ability you know, she, she can be a really attacking batsman and we saw her come off a couple of times in that Pakistan series so yeah. I, i'm probably um I'm nervously saying to you on South Africa um but you know what I'm I'm going to back them to do it <laughs> but actually no, uh, one yeah. good innings from Woolworth will definitely be an interesting game to watch it definitely would absolutely, Lee absolutely. and Laura absolutely I think it's the opening it. yeah go on yeah actually I was just going to say if the opening batsman if Lee and Ball Park get off to a good start um you know they don't even have to go and get a 100 um opening partnership but if they can sort of get deep into an 80 or a 90 somewhere around there that really sort of cements the foundation for for the batting to come ahead it also takes the pressure um you know it would definitely take the pressure of off bosh if she comes in at 3 and then she can take a little bit of more time to settle down right nervous excitement is the word i want to sum up here from the mid show on the outside view live part by west point aprilia Do join us for the post match show which is going to be an exciting game to watch. See you then. Bye. Bye guys. You're late. Don't just live life. Maxify it.